Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Madison Avenue Christian Church. It is so good to be worshiping with you in person today, as well as those of you who are joining us online. We are so glad you are with us. Rachel, who is typically right here, is in the balcony once again, helping with our online uh, live streaming. Special music this morning will be provided by Sue Osborne. Thank you for sharing your love of singing with us, Sue. And John Manker will be presiding as elder during communion. On this Thanksgiving Sunday, a big thank you goes to all who sponsored an angel from our tree this year. In just 36 hours, all the angels were taken. And that says a lot about who Mac is. Once again, your love and generosity has been overwhelmingly wonderful and greatly appreciated. The unwrapped gifts are due back by December 6th. You can arrange a time to drop your gifts off anytime. Just email or call Rachel in the office. If you did not get an angel, but are still interested in helping this holiday season, there are a few options. Rachel has a small list of items that you can purchase that will go to the resource coordinator at James E. Biggs Early Childhood Center along with the other angels. Plus, we will still be having our Christmas community meal. It will be a bit different this year as most things have in 2020. We will be putting together gift bags to pass out to the children on behalf of Santa. So if you're interested in making a donation toward the purchase of gifts for the kids, please contact Rachel. Again, she can be reached in the office or by email at rachel at mchurch.com. Tonight at 5 p.m. is one of our bi-monthly Zoom discussion sessions. We will begin a series called Scriptures That Make You Go, Hmm. The link to join the session was sent out yesterday. If you did not receive the link and would like to participate, please let Rachel know as soon as possible. We will be decorating the church for Christmas starting tomorrow about 10 a.m. If you would like to help but can't come tomorrow, please let Sharon Kentner know when you're available to help. And please make sure to read the weekly emails as they are the best mode of communication during these fluid times. The weekly emails will have the most updated information regarding church services and opportunities for outreach. Now let us enter into worship. Hi, Sue.
God is enthroned in heaven, let all mortal flesh be silent and worship our maker. Let us pray. God, the ruler of the universe. On this Christ the King Sunday, we come before your throne. <clears throat> we come here to acknowledge that your power is above all other powers. And before you, let every knee bend and let every tongue confess that you are indeed the one who rules over all the earth and you rule with compassion, grace, kindness. All that we have, all that we own comes from you. And today we come in your presence to give you thanks this Thanksgiving would be different, lots of changes, many things that we may have to accept that we would not otherwise, but we know one thing does not change, who you are and your presence in our midst, for you are the one who never changes. You're the one who watches over us always. So even though things would be different this Thanksgiving, we pause for a moment before you and give you thanks for being the God whose steadfast love endures forever. This Thanksgiving, we also remember all those who are struggling without food, who are facing danger of losing their homes, people who are standing in long lines to get enough so that they can feed their families, be with them. Even though we talk about all the crisis, we also give thanks to those who care people who volunteer, people who give of themselves their generosity. We pray that you'll bless every caring heart. We offer our personal thanksgiving before you. Accept us as we are. Bless us now. For all those who are struggling in hospitals, lives that have been lost, we pray at this time. We pray for Madison Avenue Christian Church during this time of celebration. Make us a people who would care about those who have less. And we will continue to do everything that we can and more to meet the needs of those who come to our doors. Bless every person who is bowed down before you this morning. <clears throat> grant us your peace. Grant us your strength. Grant us your wisdom. Grant us your courage. Hear us even now as we join in the prayer that you taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.
scripture reading this morning is from Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people, one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep in his right hand, and the goats at his left. King will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer them, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and rock, or naked and gave you food? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family. Then he will say to those in his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry? or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of him. Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away if you do not punish them, but the righteous will be our life. Oh, oh, oh. 
Today is Christ the King Sunday and it is also Thanksgiving Sunday. So now we need to bring these two things together and we have to do it in the presence of a text that shouldn't be a difficult text but it is it's partly difficult for us right now because we're still trying to figure out between donkey and elephant and in that world for us to have to think in terms of sheep and goat is not that easy but that's where we are so let's put aside donkey and elephant talk for a while Let's think about sheep and goat that Jesus talks about. It's also a difficult text because we cling on to parts of our faith that says it is all in the name of grace and what we do does not matter. But this is what Jesus said and therefore it matters. A life of faith is not a mindless camaraderie. It is not a life where we just cherry pick what we like and ignore other parts. I've said this several times before, I'll say it again. We were not baptized in the name of Paul. We were baptized in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus had a particular tilt in how Christ cared for the poor. When the word became flesh, it chose to reveal itself in a manger. When God took the form of flesh to walk among us, it was mostly among the poor. And it was always about healing the broken. So how we treat the poor and what we do to the least of these or fail to do is of great importance. And there's coming a day which is what Christ the King Sunday text is. There's coming a day when we will meet our maker and there will be a conversation. And if you are trying to wonder, ah, oh, that cannot be right. I need to ask God about this. Isn't it all by grace? Well, it is true. It is by grace because none of us can say, I have done everything right and therefore it is my rightful place to inherit God's kingdom. It is by grace, even though we would do everything that Christ has asked us to do. 
But if you want to have that conversation with God and ask tough questions, be like Mother Teresa of Calcutta. There is a story about her that says, do you know why Mother Teresa lived so long even though she lived a harsh life and worked among the poor and did everything, how she lived so long? I believe the story goes like this. Every time there was a tough situation, Mother Teresa would say, when I die and I go to meet God, I am going to ask God, is this fair God? Why are things this way? I'm going to ask God. And the story goes, and God from there goes, leave that woman right there. I don't want her to come here. <laughs> and that's how she lived so long. So there's your secret. If you want to live long, keep saying, when my time comes, I'm going to go to God and ask God this tough question. God will say, leave him right there. So if you have a tough question, you can go that route. But today what I intend to do is to treat this text and stand somewhere in between Christ the King Sunday and Thanksgiving. And how are we going to do this? Sharon Watkins, our former general minister and president, tells the story. She was in Africa and in Africa, they have Harvest Festival. They do that in India too. And Harvest Festival is a time when in church they bring their harvest and offer it at the altar. And it's a lot of stuff. It's quite a spectacle to see. So it was one such harvest festival and they had this huge basket at the altar. And people were bringing and putting their stuff, eggs, corn. All of a sudden, a teenager just walked down the aisle. And she came right up to the altar climbed into the basket and sat in the basket. And Sharon Watkins said, there was absolute silence there. Nobody knew how to respond to this, what to say. And the preacher stood up and said, that is true thanksgiving. That you come before the throne and offer yourself as a gift of thanksgiving. I truly believe that would be the most meaningful thing for us this Thanksgiving, to offer ourselves before God as Thanksgiving. But when you come to the altar and when you offer yourself before God and you tell God, I give myself to you, use me for your purpose and your glory, there's going to be a conversation. And the conversation may be that you just initiated by offering yourself before God. But there is going to be a response. And that response and what you say back could run something like this. For God to say, which I said last Sunday, you're my delight. For I was hungry, you fed me. I was without clothes, you clothed me. I was forsaken and thrown in the darkest bin and excluded from everybody. You embraced me. Because for what you have done to the least of these, you have done unto me. It matters, God notices, but there is more to it, people. To care for the poor. To have a heart for the broken, to be a healer, 
to extend ourselves to the least of these whom God identifies as doing unto God is not easy business. We live in a world of propaganda and the propaganda is so self-serving. It tries to tell us you really don't have to. You need to keep more for yourself. It sometimes is very tempting even in the life of the church to say well we can do our outreach but first we need to keep enough for ourselves and our future and our security. It's not easy business to put the poor and the weak as a priority. Madison Avenue Christian Church has a generous caring heart that is Christ centered where it comes to us without a second thought. I still remember the day when we used to do just Monday night dinner and our budget was tight and we were trying to wonder how to go about it and with joy Madison Avenue Christian Church said you know what we should do? We should add another meal. So let us do Monday and Wednesday. That was our response to how we can handle our finances better. It's not easy business. It is so tempting when you hear these kinds of words about the poor. Oh, they're bums. They're addicts. They're lazy. They just do not have any responsibility. They're welfare queens. They're hillbillies. They're not educated. And you kind of say, yeah, that's a good reason, just to ignore them, put them away. Because I don't have to give to that, I don't have to care, because I am so busy and my resources can be used more for my own purposes. Why would I have to waste it on people who are not worth it? So when you sit in that basket and say, it's not easy, oh God, to get away from all that propaganda and to do what you have called me to do, to do unto the least of these. But I pray that you will continue to speak to my heart, that I can silence all those voices that cast the poor in bad light that give me justification so that I do not have to do anything. Thank you for being the one who's instilled your spirit in me. So today when I come before you and give you thanks, I give you thanks for all that you have given me, but I give you thanks for giving me a heart that would share that would give, that is generous. Thank you for giving me a heart that would silence the propaganda of hatred and embrace the voices of reconciliation and hope. And you know what God says? Yeah, for what you have done unto the least of these, you have done unto me. To God be honor, power, glory, and majesty, now and forevermore. Amen.
Let us prepare for the communion service. In preparing myself for the communion service, I recalled two quotes that I found in preparing for the last Zoom session. One by Alexander Campbell, our founder. While there is but one faith, there may be 10,000 opinions. And another by another early church leader, noting that the purpose of the Disciples of Christ movement was, first of all, to overcome the spirit of rivalry and antagonism among the people of God. Secondly, to promote the spirit of Christian love and fellowship. And finally, to seek a basis upon which all Christians might stand and worship together in mutual esteem and affection. Isn't that what this table is all about? All are welcome to partake at this table. Let us pray. God, our creator and sustainer, we welcome, we come to this table seeking unity in your love. Remind us that until we make this world beautiful for all, and not just the few, we have not fully realized your kingdom. Let that be our goal. As we gather at this table, grant to us the courage, the en energy, and the motivation to offer ourselves to do what we can to serve your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm reading the words of institution this morning from Matthew 26, verse 29 through 26 through 29. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never drink again drink of the, this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Drink ye all of it. Oh,
if you think we're done, we're not. I'm going to do the benediction a little differently today. <clears throat> to do the lead, to do to those who have nothing is to do unto God. It's not easy business. It means not just sacrifice, but changing our priorities. Towards the end of the first year when I was here, we're all standing in the fellowship hall. We are planning on remodeling the fellowship hall, putting a new entrance, new more parking, all those kinds of great plans. There's an interior designer, one of our own, in our midst. And we're talking about how it should look. And there was this beautiful idea, you know, it should look like a living room. We should have couches and all these beautiful things in our fellowship hall, which would be inviting. And somebody said, well, what do we do about our dinners? And how would we move these things back and forth? And uh, it's about what kind of furniture we can put. Uh, that's not an easy thing. How are we going to juggle these two things? Esther Reese, who was chair of elders then, every church has a saint and she is ours. Esther Reese just said, Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. With all that we do for the poor, that kind of a lobby appeal would not work for us. You know what? If it's not good enough for the poor, it's not good enough for Madison Avenue Christian Church. We don't need it. And it was so. We never did it. See, to do to the least of these is to change our perception of who we are, what our priorities are, what is important to us, and what is not. To, praise, to place Christ as our utmost love and affection is to give up some of, other, some of our other love and affections we have in our life. Go in peace. May the peace of God be with you now and always. Amen.